This video will cover the Year 8 Linear Solving Fundamentals Test Preview. So these are C-level questions. If you're following along with the test paper, you can just use the time tags down below to skip to the question number that you need. Otherwise, with those time tags, I've also put a quick description of what the sorts of questions are in case you're just looking for some help with any particular sort of question in this topic. And in the first round of questions, we're being asked to use the balance method to solve for x. These are all one-step equations. So in this one, I'm trying to get x by itself. It's telling me to add x, so I'm going to subtract x. Anything I do to one side of the equation, I need to do to the other. My next line is all I've got left is x and all I've got left is 5. In the next one, we're still trying to get x by itself, but this time it's asking me to divide by 3. The opposite to divide is times, so I'm going to times by 3. I need to do this to both sides. All I'll have left is x and all I'll have left is negative 12. In the third one, it's asking me to multiply by 3. The opposite to multiply is to divide. I'm going to do that to both sides. All I'll have left is x, and all I'll have left is 7. Question D is asking me to subtract 5. The opposite to subtract is to add. So I'll add 5 to both sides. All I'll have left is x, and all I'll have left is 7. In question E, it's telling me to multiply by minus 4. So instead, I'm going to divide by minus 4 on both sides. All I'll have left is x. And all I'll have left on this side is minus 5. You might notice that I took both a minus and a 4 that time. It's just a bit quicker and easier. In the last one, it's asking me to subtract 4. So instead, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. That's going to leave me with x, and that's going to leave me with minus 1. In question 2, we're solving equations again using the balance method, but this time we're doing it in two steps. So it's important to have a look at getting rid of the thing that stands out first, and then get rid of the other. So the 2 is out by itself there. It's a positive number. I'll start by subtracting 2 from both sides. That will leave me 7x's on one side, and that will leave me 21 on the other. It's telling me to multiply by 7 now, so I'm going to divide by 7. Anything I do to one side, I've got to do to the other. So all I've got left is x, and all I have left is 3. Question B, I'm going to remove the 5 first. It's telling me to minus 5, so I'm going to add 5. Anything I do to one side, I've got to do to the other. So all I've got left over here is 20. And all I've got left on the other side is 2x's. It's telling me to multiply by 2, so I'm going to divide by 2. I'm going to do that to both sides. So all I'll have left is 10, and all I'll have left is x. You can write x equals 10 if you'd prefer, but it means the same thing. In question C, it's important, really important here, that I remove the 6 before the 2, okay? It's telling me to divide by 6, so I'm going to multiply by 6. I'm going to do that to both sides, and all I'll have left is x minus 2. And all I'll have left on the other side, if I don't cross out my own work, is 24. Now it's telling me to subtract 2, so I'm going to add 2. Do that to both sides. All I've got left is x, and all I've got left is 26. Going well here. Now we're down to d. It's really important here that we, instead of getting rid of the 3 first, we must get rid of that 1 first. It's out there by itself, and it's the thing that's affecting all the other terms in the equation, so we'll add 1 first to both sides. Now we'll have x divided by 3 on one side, and we'll have 3 on the other. We need to get rid of the 3. It says to divide, so we're going to multiply both sides by 3. All we'll have left is x. All we'll have left is 9. The next one, get rid of the 12 first. Don't get confused in this one. The 12 is a positive term, so that means we're going to take it away. It's got nothing to do with the negative in front of the x. 
And so all I've got left now is negative x, and all I've got left is negative 17. Technically here what we're doing is we're actually dividing both sides by negative 1, but most people don't bother showing it. They just take the negative off both sides and make them both positives. And in question F, again, we're being really careful. 4 is a positive term, so we're going to subtract it to remove it. We do that to both sides. We'll be left with negative x, and on this side, we'll be left with 7. And in this case, we're also technically dividing by negative 1 on both sides, but usually everyone just follows the rule that you can just switch the negative over to the other side because we always need to answer x with a, like a x always has to be positive when we answer it. All right, moving on to g. It's really important that we get rid of the 2 first. It's telling me to subtract, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides. All I'll have left is 3x on 4. And on this side, I'll have 12. Now it's telling me to divide by 4, so I'll times by 4. All I'll have left is 3x's, and on this side I'll have 48. Now I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. And all I'll have left over here is x, and on this side I'll have 16. Okay, h. I'm going to get rid of that 4 first. It's a positive term, so I'm going to subtract it. That will remove it. I've got to do the same to both sides, so I'll be left with negative 3x on this side, and I'll be left with 1 on this side. Now, this is okay here, and this is sometimes where my messy method is just a little bit better. Another way of saying we'll divide on both sides is you can say it like this. I might divide by negative 3 on both sides. It's a little clearer where you get to your answer. So here, all I've got left is x, and on this side, I've got negative one third. And just as a side note, because someone was asking me about this the other day, it doesn't matter whether we write it like that, or like this, or like this. It all means the same thing, okay? So any of those answers are fine. And the last one for this one, I want to get rid of that 3 first every time. It says to divide, so I'll multiply both sides by 3. All I've got left is 1 minus x, and over here I've got 12. Now I want to get rid of that 1. It's a positive term, so I'm going to take it away. All I've got left is negative x, and on this side I've got 11. Technically, we're dividing by negative 1 on both sides, but like I said before, usually everyone just switches the negative over to the 11, so x is a positive when we answer it. So, positive 1x is negative 11. Alrighty, moving on to question 4. You guys are doing really well, by the way. We are going to, oops, sorry, question 3, I've skipped the whole section. Question three. We're going to solve these. Now, don't do this because I wouldn't normally do this question the way the question's asking. The first thing that I would do normally when I did this question was I would just divide by eight on both sides first just to simplify this so that you ended up with a plus three equals four. But you're not allowed to do that in this question, so we're going to scrub all of that out. This question specifically directs us up here by first expanding the brackets. So they want to test that you know how to expand and then simplify. So we're stuck doing it the way that they want us to do. So remember that looks like this. It's 8 times A, then 8 times 3, or that times that, and that times that. So we'll expand it out. 8, A's, uh, eight times A is 8A. Eight, 8 times 3 is 24. And that Excuse me, that equals 32. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go about simplifying this. So we will take 24 from both sides, and all we'll have left is 8a, and 
all we'll have left here is A. Now we need to divide by 8 on both sides. All I've got left is A and all I've got left is 1. The next example, I'll expand it out. 2 times 5 is 10 and 2 times X is 2X. That equals 46. Now we're back to balance method to simplify it. I would like to remove that 10 first. It's a positive term, so I'm going to take it away from both sides. All I'm left with is 2x's, and on this side I've got 36. Now I need to divide by 2 on both sides to remove that 2. All I've got left is x, and all I've got left is 18, and that one's solved as well. Question C, 5 times 4 is 20, 5 times negative x is minus 5x's, that equals 20. This one might be interesting because we've got to remove the 20. 20 is a positive number, so we're going to have to take it away on both sides. That means that all I've got left is negative 5x's, and on this side I've got nothing. That's okay. If you find that, that's a perfectly legitimate answer so far. We can follow the process, but we know the answer is going to be zero at this point. What we would do, though, is we'd divide by minus 5 on both sides. All I've got left is x, and nothing divided by minus 5 is nothing. And it's completely okay if x equals nothing. Okay? That will become very important by the time you're in year 10. Okay. Expanding out again, three groups of A makes three A's. Three times minus four makes minus 12. I would like to get rid of that 12. It's a negative number, so I'm going to add 12 to both sides. All I'll have left is 3A. And over on this side, I'll have uh, 8. Now I'm adding it. I'll have 32. Now this probably is one of those times where my method tends to be a bit better than this neat method I've been using in the videos because if I divide by 3 using my method to remove it, it automatically turns it into a fraction. So all we have left is A, and on this side, the answer is in fact 32 thirds. If you can't simplify it, it stays as a fraction. Don't worry about turning it into a decimal or anything like that. I won't mark you wrong if you do, but Better to leave it as a fraction because later on when these get harder, the fractions are a little bit easier to work with and it doesn't introduce any error if you're round. Moving on to this one, we've got 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times x is 3x, that equals 10. Need to remove that 12 and it's a positive number, so I'm going to take it away. All I've got left is 3x's. And over here I've got minus 2. This time it's killing me to times by 3, so I'm going to divide by 3. Anything I do to one side, I've got to do to the other. All I've got left is x, because those two cancel one another out. And over here I've got negative 2 thirds as my answer. Can't simplify it any further. Last one for this one, question F, 2 times 1 is 2. And 2 times negative x makes negative 2x's. That equals 40. I'll get rid of that 2 first. It's a positive number, so I'm going to take it away both sides. All I have left is negative 2x's. And on this side, I'll have 38. I'm going to get rid of that negative 2. It tells me to multiply, so I'm going to divide by minus 2. This is what happens if you do it this way with my method, by the way. They cancel each other out. All I've got left is x. Pop 38 over negative 2 into your calculator and you'll find that you get the answer negative 19. So round it down if you can. And that one's finished. Question 4. We've only got six questions to go. Getting close to the end. What we're doing here is substitution. This is something that people tend to find quite hard, but it's actually easy. Just don't skimp on your working out here. And remember, we've got to follow BOD maths. Okay? So multiplication and division will come before addition and subtraction. 
So here what we do is we replace the letters. So every time we see an A, we're going to replace it with negative 3. And every time we see a B, we're going to replace it with 2. So let's just write it out again. So this time it will say 5 times negative 3 instead of A plus 2. And then we go through and we've got to do our bod math. So multiplication first. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Just put some equal signs in here. Plus 2. And negative 15 plus 2 makes negative 13. Make sure you show some working out so I can find you some half marks if it goes wrong halfway through. I'll replace the B in question B with a 2. And then I'll have four groups of negative 3. I'm remembering to do bod mass. So I'm going to do my multiplication first. So the 2 can come straight down. And then minus 4 times minus 3 makes positive 12. So the answer to this one is 14. The next one, I've got six groups of A, so that will be six groups of negative three. And then I'm going to subtract two groups of B, which is two. So in this one, multiplication first, six groups of negative three is minus 18. And then negative two groups of two makes negative four. So the answer to this one will be minus 22. Think of this one as being like debt. I borrow $18 off you the first day and I borrow another four the next, so now I owe you $22. Moving down, we've got a squared plus b. So squared means to multiply that number by itself, okay? So what we've got here, and if you use your calculator, you must put this in brackets, okay? Your calculator will 100% of the time give you the wrong answer. If you don't, plus 2. And so minus 3 times minus 3 makes positive 9 plus 2, and that's 11. Just remember, okay, that a squared means a times a. It does not mean a times 2, okay? It means that number multiplied by itself. It's called an indice, okay? All right, and then the next one's pretty easy. We've got two groups of b, so 2 times 2. And then we're going to be careful here. We've got to take away negative 3. So there's a little trick to this one here. 2 twos are 4, but then minus minus means plus 3. So this one's 4 plus 3, which is 7. And the very last question is just a times b. So this one's just minus 3 times 2. And minus 3 times 2 is minus 6. That's the end of the preview.